unfortunately, the, the uh, Sugarloaf isn't part of your walk, but I'm amazed. 131 kilometers. Yes. Are you mental? Not well, some people say that. <laughs> you know, I am a chess player, and they, my mother says about chess players that they're the greatest collection of oddballs. Right. But um, no, it's something I've always wanted to do, Paul. Um, I'm, I, I enjoy getting outdoors, I enjoy walking. And the Wicklow Way, I first learned about it when I was in primary school. And I just thought that with the way things are at the moment, this was the perfect time to actually do it. I might not be able to do it in the future. And I thought, while I'm doing it, I may as well do it for charity. And there's no, I mean, one of the most fantastic organizations we have here in Greystones are the Greystones Community First Responders. I mean, they're a registered charity. They've been going for 14 years and they get no funding whatsoever. They have to fundraise everything themselves and they usually do about two fundraisers a year. But unfortunately with the COVID-19, they've had to stop not only their operations, but their fundraising. So there's no money coming in whatsoever. So this is actually their first fundraiser of 2020. Wow. Um, so, and if anybody wants to uh, find out more, there's a GoFundMe page. I'll oh, um, we'll link that for sure, yeah. yeah. We'll put it in the text, we'll have uh, all the links to the right places. And i just let people know exactly. I know it's the 1st of July, you're going to head out. 1st of July? How you're planning to finish mid, mid December, you hope to be back. <laughs> Maybe. Well, you know, with my directional <laughs> skills, you know, I might get a little bit lost. Um, but no, I'm hoping to do it over five to six days. Five if I can really get the energy to push on further than my, my stops with six at the most. I may or may not have to stop for an extra night of camping on the on the final leg if if you will. And the rumours that you're gonna use a segue that, that they're just rumours. Ah right? uh, there you are. I can I'm happy to deny neither confirm nor deny. No I'm <laughs> I, I'm happy to deny those rumours. It's going to be uh walking from Marley Park in Dublin all the way down to Clonigal. I'm gonna do the full trail. No, you know jumping ahead into a taxi or you know <laughs> in, um, or, or or on a train or something like that um, but it, it really is um, you know a, a great opportunity to get outdoors and I think all of us have been connecting more with outdoors because we're working a lot of people are working from home they're, and they're not commuting like I would be normally you have a little bit more time to do walking and explore outdoors and I think it's helped me to reconnect with nature a little bit by being able to do a lot of walking. I've been doing a lot of training. I went up the Great Sugarloaf actually recently. I walked from Greystones up to the Great Sugarloaf and back to Greystones last weekend as kind of a, a practice run and I survived. I can, hear, I can hear somebody crying in the wind there. Was that that you? I can hear <laughs> cries of anguish. Cry, cries of anguish. <laughs> I managed to survive it actually. Oh, um, so I felt, yes, I probably will just about be able to, to do the Wicklow way, hopefully. And again, just, you know, that importance of, of donating to the first responders because they get no funding. And like the defibrillators, which are, are life saving, every time they use one of those, it's 120 euro to replace the pads. They have to replace the pads every time it's about, and they use it. And it costs about 120 euro plus VAT. So all the money that we get in is literally going to try to hopefully save lives or, or um, keep people in, in good health. They're all volunteers. Um, they have to fund everything them, themselves or through their fundraising from jackets to um, equipment, petrol, uh, defibrillator equipment, everything. They have to do it themselves. So really would encourage people if they can to donate. It is for an excellent cause. Now, I, I should mention too that you, 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 the Wicklow Way, you said you learned about it yourself but when you were at school. And this is the great J.B. Malone and he, he sort of negotiated with all the different landowners. It was a huge momentous task and it was also a breakthrough really for the country because it's the first of its kind that you've got 131 kilometres of a walk right through some of the best countryside of course in the country. But he's a wonderful man to have, have achieved that. I think so, and it's fitting that on the Wicklow Way there is actually a monument to him and I hope to stop off at that point and, and take a photo and, and reflect on the excellent uh, facility that he's provided for walkers and that was the catalyst for other walks around the country as you correctly say, thanks to J.B. Malone. And I believe back when he was, he was a writer, he was actually writing regular reports about walking around Wicklow and it really helped to garner a lot of interest for people about walking around County Wicklow and other parts of the country. So hopefully if, if with this, 
you know, I can, it'll be good exercise for myself, but hope, most importantly, it raises good money and also the awareness that we have wonderful things here in County Wicklow, such as the Wicklow Way, for people to be able to enjoy the outdoors and connect with nature. Hopefully this will be an all-round success for everybody. I suppose the final uh, word would be the fact that you're Mayor of Greystones and, and it's one of those sort of roads that no longer exists, but there's always a, you know, a certain degree of people who are hopefully steering the town in the right direction. Would you, would you, I don't know if you were mayor again now, would there be certain things you'd, you'd jump to straight away? Because I suppose in a way it's always going to be problems with dog poo and I mean, an extra lifeguard and it'd be nice to have a pontoon and there's too much rubbish overflowing from the bins. I don't know whether you, you're ever tempted to step back into that world or whether you realise it, it, it is an eternal ring of hell. Well, <laughs> I mean, Greystones has ha has always had and continues to have a lot of challenges the well i suppose the only running i'm hoping to do is actual physical running you know um but it i mean i come back quite regularly every four to six weeks and i see that the change is a little bit more because i'm i'm on the outside and i do see that there are a lot new a lot of new housing developments in particular large scale now I know that in England you know the green belt is sacrosanct you know there'd be large campaigns to do with green belt because people want to make sure that there are good facilities that the town can keep up in terms of infrastructure roads public transport uh, and also air pollution that's a big issue and something that we'll have to address going forward here in Greystones especially with all the new housing developments because with more houses you have more demand for electricity and more petrol cars so part of what society will really have to look at with all of these new housing estates are we building um, electric ports for electric cars are we encouraging more electric cars to get those emissions down so I can see from the outside that Greystones has a lot of challenges but that said it is a fantastic town and we're very lucky to have organizations like Greystones community first responders that make it such a wonderful place for us to live I suppose finally, finally uh, is Bernie still okay with you coming home with the laundry every four to six weeks? Is that, is that, is that I'm very lucky to have um, a mother like, like Bernadette. She does so much um, for myself and for lots of people around the town. And nobody gets the whites as white as Bernie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but I do my own laundry, thankfully. Oh, right. <laughs>